Okay. So now we get to start the fun stuff. Okay. Um, so let's just start. If I if I have x c. So remember, like what we're doing here is I'm about to start coding that up. Okay. I'm about to co start coding that up. Right. So that's that's the center of the ith grid block minus the, the right hand side of the kth grid block. That quantity squared plus that other term, the whole thing's under a square root. Right, so we'll just do the first term okay, for now. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to say. Right now, um, I'm just going to take, I'm going to say that i is equal to 0. Right? It's the first, the first grid block's corner cell, right? I mean, center cell, center. Right? So xc0, okay? Minus. Let's just let's just look at what happens. <clears throat> All right. So I just printed that. Okay. So so this is remember this is from let, let, let's, let's take a smaller number of grid blocks so that there's not so many numbers to look at. So I'm just going to go down to five. So there'll be four grid blocks. So, right, so all I did was I took the center of the first one and I'm subtracting uh, the right hand side, right? So. It is, but ma uh, Python NumPy is smart enough to let you do that. Okay. So if you MATLAB, I guess you can't do that, huh? You'd have to have a constant vector and subtract it by a constant vector. Yeah. So you, you know that's a little subtlety. All right. So you know this is so this this is the one where you know so this is our center, a number, and we're subtracting that value. And that value, and that value, and that value, and that value. Right? Oh, 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 this is the right-hand side. We're, we're subtracting that value, that value, that value, that value, that value. All from this. Right? So this minus that, this minus that, this minus that, this minus that, this minus that. That's, that's what that one operation did. Right? Uh, Then, you know, of course, then we can square this thing. So now we just have the squared values. Okay, and then we'll uh, we'll add yc zero. Plus y top from one to the n. Square that guy, and then put the whole thing under a square root. Here's where things get kind of cool. This is really cool. Uh, this is a really kind of cool feature of, of NumPy. And honestly, I, I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I don't know how to do it in my lab off the top of my head. That's what I'm about to do. All right. So 
what I did here was I, remember, it's a matrix, right? So I goes from one to the end, and K goes from one to the end, right? All, what I did here was I, sub, I fixed I, right? So I have I equals zero, K goes from zero, one, two, three, four, five. Right? Now, what I want to do is cycle through both of them at the same time, okay? And what I can do is instead of putting a zero there, I'm going to I'm going to change this to all of them. And if all I did was that and I ran it, I don't get a matrix, right? I, don't, I just get some numbers. And the numbers are all the same. And the reason they're all the same is because if I'm just going, if, if k is going with, if i and k are going together, so if i is increasing and k is increasing, I'm doing this. That minus that, that minus that, that minus that, that minus that, that minus that. That minus that. And because I have fixed size grids, so I get the same number. Right? That's not what I want to do. I want to do this minus that, minus that, you know, this, this minus that, this minus that, this minus that, this minus that, this minus that. And then I want to go here, and I want to go this minus that, minus that, minus that, minus that, minus that. Then I want to go here. You understand? That's what I want to do. Okay. In MATLAB, I think you might have to create a loop there. In Python or NumPy, I just create a new axis. So. And yeah, it may, I mean, the code is nice and compact, but that's not the point as much as whenever I use these NumPy operations and I keep the loops out of it, this is done in pure C. It's fast. All these sort of NumPy calls and additions and all that, if I take a NumPy array and add a NumPy array to it, that addition is done in compiled C code versus interpreted slow Python code. And if I were to put a for loop in there and loop over it, that would be interpreted slow Python code. And it would just greatly slow the code down. Okay. So that's sort of the feature. That, that's kind of cool. This is called broadcasting. I, I actually think there's a way to do it in MATLAB, but the syntax is not this compact. I think there's a way. I, I think I looked it up once, and there is a similar feature, but the syntax, the syntax is not, not as compact. Um, so then I just need the sort of uh, the ideas are the same. I just need to include the rest of the terms now. So. Basically, I'm going to divide by the multiplication of those. Well, yeah. So these two terms multiplied together. You guys see how fast I'm moving around the screen? You notice that and how I'm copying and pasting stuff? Look, I have no mouse connected to my phone. I'm not doing that. Either. I can do that because I'm using a proper editor here. Learn how to use a proper editor to save you a lot of time. Um, and I think that's it, right? So I divide by <coughs> yeah, so that I just take the first term, get rid of the squared sign, and divide by it, and then take the second term, get rid of the squared sign, and divide by it. So I think uh, vi, vim, vim, vim. It's, uh, vim is the standard Unix editor, of course. It's you know any. Linux or Unix machine will have a Vim installed on it, and it's you know, one of the oldest editors, but it's still around and used a lot because it's very good. And then of course I have a lot of customizations, and you know you can script, you can 
There's a lot of little fancy stuff you can do behind the scenes and make it even faster and more clear cut. Okay, so let's just make sure that runs. Yep, okay. So, I'm gonna get rid of the print statement and call this guy A. So now we have um, so now we're going to the to the uh, left side. So that's going to go from the beginning to the n minus one in all these cases. Again, this is uh, so before we were going, you know, e each of these corners is in X, right? And so if I want to take only the right hand sides when I started the first entry, you know, that's the zeroth entry, that's the first entry. So now I want to start at the zeroth entry and go to there, which is the one from the end entry. Right, so that's all I did. I think um, I could go on typing this, but I think in the interest of time, let me just do this. Um, okay. So in the interest of time, I just used my version control system and went back and got. So all I did, I'd written this code already and I just deleted those lines. And I just used my version control system to go back and get what I had written. So this is, this is the complete uh, solution. Right, so that's just, that's just that guy, you know, this from here to here is I, and then I just multiply this constant. The shear modulus divided by four, divided by pi, divided by one over the Poisson root. One minus the Poisson ratio. So that is that. 